Uh, Secretary Monsada, what do you make of what he said, what Dr. Lavinia said? Do you think it's doable, 70% reduction, uh, aspirational 1.5%, 2% mandatory? Yes, Can we do uh, it? I would agree that that is doable. But we have to, to remember that 70% that is conditional. What does that mean, ma'am, when you say conditional? That means we need support in terms of technical, uh, financial, to be able to achieve uh, that goal. And that support is going to come from where? From the government in terms of policies or from the private sector? From both, and, and that would be part of the commitments of the emitters. So again, we go back to this collaboration yes. that's needed in order to achieve. Um, I know you do have a presentation. You have about seven slides. If you could uh, uh, pass yeah. on the clicker. Thank you so much. You have uh, seven minutes, Secretary. Okay, good morning. Um, my uh, slides would be something uh, different from theirs because this would uh, mean statistics for the country so that we would be able to appreciate more where we are and where we, we are going. So uh, this slide shows the primary uh, energy mix of the country. So we see an increasing energy requirement uh, but having more colors, meaning uh, we have natural gas and renewable energy as we move along. In terms of power generation, one thing I would like to highlight is that in the primary mix, we have very high dependence on oil, that's the red uh, color. And, but in the power generation, it is decreasing. So uh, oil for power generation is practically more for the generator sets that we need uh, in the islands and as picking uh, or backup plants. Okay. Then uh, this is our outlook. We have a business as usual scenario, that's the left chart. And you see coal as increasing so high. Uh, that is if we um, uh, interpolate based on the recent uh, level and on the levels of committed and indicative capacities. Uh, the right chart shows our fuel mix scenario, wherein um, we have this aspiration to have a balanced uh, energy mix, and that is 30, 30, 30. 30 for renewable energy, so yun yung uh, nasa top um, bands. Then coal would just be 30, and natural gas would have a 30% share to balance between RE and uh, coal. Because I think uh, uh, we are aware that we just cannot rely also on RE to, be, to have that much, much bigger share. Uh, the balance of 10% would be open to other um, fuels like Oil could still be there. Um, ocean, which is not yet a part of our present uh, mix. And, well, I would like to say that nuclear is still also an option for us. But this uh, fuel mix scenario also, uh, which would actually correspond or be our, the energy share for the 70% uh, volume or value that we, we submitted, actually we would like uh, to refrain from saying that um, for us uh, victims of uh, climate change, uh, our contribution should not be really that commitment compared to the emitters. I think there was a, a distinction. The emitters would have to commit, but us uh, victims, we still contribute to uh, the cleaner air. Um, we have laws at the moment. Uh, for, for example, we have the EPIRA, which governs the power uh, industry. And we have mechanisms. Some are in place, some are still uh, being worked out. So for example, we have the spot market, WESM, um, the competitive selection process for um, acquiring uh, or having a power supply agreements. Uh, there are already uh, issuances on this by the Energy Regulatory Commission and the DOE. 
We have retail competition and open access. Uh, circulars have been issued on this. Uh, central scheduling in terms of the um, utilization of or dispatching of um, the different um, generated power. So now we are working on the Mindanao energy market uh, because, as you know, Luzon and Visayas are interconnected, so the WESEM already applies to that. But Mindanao uh, is uh, not yet interconnected. Mindanao still, as of today, has, uh, well, the supply is already bigger than the demand, but we need more to be able to meet the reserve requirement so that we can have a continuous, adequate, reliable supply. And Mindanao is where we have most of the new coal plants coming in. But of course, Mindanao would also have several and much, uh, in terms of number, more renewable energy projects, but in terms of the total installed capacity, it's much lower. So we're also working on the reserve market. And that's uh, uh, pursuant to the IPIRA. Now we have another law, which is the Renewable Energy Law, and we have these mechanisms, the feed-in tariff. So solar, wind, run of river hydro, biomass, and ocean would have um, uh, feed-in tariffs. Um, RE, or power generated from RE, uh, fall under must or priority dispatch. So everything that they declare in the market, then that should be dispatched first over any other uh, resource. Then uh, the law also provided for priority connection to the transmission and distribution system. We have a net metering for renewable energy. This is in place. Now the next would have to be, um, the, the guidelines would still have to be implemented, but we're targeting um, that we should be able to uh, release the guidelines before June or up to June. So renewable energy portfolio standard, this would uh, uh, require um, a certain percentage of every power uh, of, from the distribution utility to be RE. Now, um, this is actually my last slide, uh, the directions. So we are now working on updating the energy plan, which would include the power development plan, transmission, distribution development plan towards that uh, aspired fuel mix policy. So for one, because, um, can I go over time? Yes, yeah, because um, there was mention of the carbon tax. Uh, I think one of the concerns of the Philippines and particularly the, the power sector is we have a very high power rate. And in fact, we're not competitive with our neighbors because of this high rate. And it would not be a good idea to impose carbon tax on coal to make coal uh, comparable to the other um, uh, fuels for power generation. So what we plan to do is really encourage um, um, RE development and then categorize plants as to base load, mid merit, and peaking so that there can be competition from these different categories. Then uh, one of the issues on uh, projects, not just energy projects, is the permitting process. So we have this uh, um, project which we, uh, this is for tracking through a, a virtual tracking system uh, where the proponents of projects can track where their applications are uh, with the different government agencies. Then the government agencies would also have access to it so that uh, uh, they would know because we would have say, uh, target uh, time for each uh, processing of permit, clearance, endorsement, and so on. And also the public could have access to this information, although in, not in much detail. And of course, um, our target for the 70% the we're talking about would also include energy efficiency and conservation. That would be a major component because if you efficiently use energy, you would need less power plants. Um, and that would be from the, the producers and the consumers, not just end use, but even from the uh, generators and all throughout the uh, supply chain. Then, of course, information that should be strengthened so that we can have a more uh, uh, appreciation and eventually cooperation. 
Then international relations and partnerships. Uh, this would be very important because um, um, that the, co the collaboration, uh, cooperation, and coordination again is uh, very important. And then, as mentioned, and I would like to uh, uh, note that we have here uh, Congressman uh, Ray Umali, the chair of the Energy Committee, uh, who is also very supportive of us. And we have these legislations that we need to pass, like for energy efficiency, for natural gas, uh, LPG, energy projects as projects of national significance so that uh, local uh, ordinances cannot just move or stop projects that we have. And of course, the fuel mix policy that uh, uh, Tony uh, mentioned. So we have this uh, for our plans as to how uh, we want the energy sector to move uh, towards our fuel mix policy and uh, meeting our objectives of 70%. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. And let me pick up on that 70% because the burning question I've got here with 19 votes, and keep them coming, okay? You guys are great, okay? Keep them coming. I want to see 100 here, but I'm getting 19 votes. What is your assessment of the Philippines' commitment under climate change agreement pledging to commit 70% of its energy use to renewables, even as it has numerous coal-fired power plants coming online in the next couple of years? Well actually, well, actually, the Department of Energy, our task really is first to ensure that we have energy supply. Okay, but that energy supply, uh, having that security, uh, we have actually a, an energy reform agenda, which we, we call it, uh, um, presented during this administration. So to balance this security thing, which would include access, would be also uh, optimal pricing because um, we just cannot have supply, uh, but very unaffordable. But we don't want to use the term affordable because that would be very subjective. We want to use the term reasonable, reasonable to the producers, to the users, and of course, government. Now, the third aspect of that is sustainable, sustainability, sustainable development. And um, that's how we proceed. So the environmental as aspect would be part of the sustainable uh, leg that we have, our pillar.